G'day everyone, it's Alan here from Fishing Mad and thanks for tuning in. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of different lures and soft plastics that work really well for trout. It's just a small sample size of some of the stuff I've got. Now there are different lures and soft plastics that are designed for fishing lakes, some for trolling, some for fishing in shallow streams, and the volume of choices is just about endless. In this helpful video, I'm gonna share with you the lures and soft plastics that I've had the most success with whilst targeting trout and why. And I'm gonna cover six different categories. So we're gonna cover shallow diving hard body lures, spoons, wing lures, soft plastics including creature baits, surface lures, and floating lures for shallow streams. And in each item, I'm gonna to touch on its purpose, how I use them, the size, the weights, the colors, the costs, and some really worthwhile alternatives that you can also have a look at. Now, no doubt there's gonna be some really cool products that I don't mention in this because there are so many. So do make sure that you let us know in the comments the favorite trout lures and soft plastics that you're using. We'd love to read your comments and hear what you've got to say. That's enough of that. Let's get stuck straight into it. Okay, let's start off by talking about shallow diving hard body lures. And I've got quite a bit of stuff here to show you because this is one of my favorite forms of fishing for trout. Love walking the banks, I use them on the kayak, on the boat, trolling a whole heap of different ways that these lures do work really, really well. So my favorite one in this space is the Daiwa Double Clutch in the 70 millimeter version. There's a couple of different colors that I'll show you, but typically I like anything across a whole range of soft plastics and lures anything that resembles a rainbow trout or a brown trout. You're gonna find your colors like your silvers and your pinks, your golds and your blacks. You're gonna find a bit of a common theme throughout this video is you're gonna see a lot of colors of that kind of spectrum. So let's focus on these lures for a little bit. So these were really designed for fishing in your shallow flats for species like brim and flathead. There's a number of different ways that you can fish these, whether you're walking the banks, whether you're fishing off a kayak or boat, or even whether you're trawling them at the back. What's really great about these is that profile size. So as I said, I really like the 70 millimeter versions. I think it replicates a lot of things that trout would eat in many of those systems. So whether it's a very, very small juvenile trout, whether it's some bait fish or a minnow, something of that nature, it's got that really good profile size. There's some ball bearings in there which actually move and shift, which allows for good casting distance. So these cast really well. Got really good strong action in the water. And what they've done recently as well is they've upgraded the trebles, which is really good. So they've now got Owner ST36BC trebles, and I find that the size of the treble is also really good. Better than some of the alternatives I'm gonna show you later. And you can fish these in a number of different techniques. You can just cast them. Basically, as soon as they hit the water, you do a slow roll, which is just a continuous retrieval of your spin reel. And you can do that at a slow or a medium pace. And what you're gonna find is this is gonna dive and will just be bobbing in the water. The other thing that you can do is you can really mix up the retrieves, add in some pauses and some twitches, and that's where you get some of that darting action. A lot of those bites will come after you've done a little twitch, and then that lure just suspends in the water and pauses there for a couple of seconds, and that's often when trout will come through and bite these. So these have got a really nice darting and twitching action in the water. That's why they work so well on a whole range of species, not only trout. So that's one way you can fish them. Obviously, you can fish them in your boat and your kayak. The other thing that you can do is you can trawl these at the back of your boat. So when we fish with these, we're usually motoring it around three knots. We've got about 40 or 50 meters of line out the back. And these are just bobbing around in the water. And you'll notice with these, your rod tip's gonna be sort of doing that constant twitching action. So even if you're land basing, you're doing that continuous slow roll, or if you're trolling at the back, just keep an eye on your rod tip. As long as it's doing that bobbing action, these things are gonna be doing exactly what they need to. So they come in five different sizes. So there was a smaller 48 millimeter size that was released earlier this year, really specifically for targeting brim. You then got your 60 millimeter versions, which is very versatile. You can target trout. I use a lot of these for targeting things like estuary perch and things like that as well. So that's a really nice versatile size. However, for trout, most of the time I'm using the 70 millimeter version like that. So you can see 
We've got that one there, and I've got them in a whole range of different colors because this is one of my preferred go-tos. That's in that camel Wumutu color, and then also in golds and blacks. So those colors are really, really good. So that's my preference. You can then move up to a 96 mil version. So this is quite a big one. I tend to only use these when I'm trolling out of the back of a boat. The other thing that I like to do is I like to remove this middle treble just because I find that the swimming action is a little bit weird if you leave it in there. So that's one thing that I do. They also come in a 115 millimeter version, which you could use for trout, but predominantly I don't. I find that to be a little bit too big. So these only weigh five grams, but they do cast really well, so don't let that put you off. So five grams, and obviously they've got at the front of them that little plastic part there. So that is the bib, and that determines how deep these things are gonna get to when you're working them in the water. And these ones here are generally gonna get you down to about 1.5 meters deep. So for me, 70 mil version, five grams, 1.5 meters deep. It's a really, really good option. Now these Daiwa double clutches cost about $25 from most retail stores. So there are definitely some really good viable alternatives and some cheaper ones. This is one that I've used for many, many years. That's so a really, really pretty looking lure. Again, replicates a rainbow trout with those beautiful green and pink and sort of silver colors. So that is a Yozuri Pins Minnow. So that is a really, really good one. You're gonna find that that bib size is a little bit smaller. So you're gonna find that's not gonna dive down anywhere near as deep. So that'll probably get you down to about half a meter. So I use this one quite a bit when I'm fishing in slightly shallower waters or where it might be really weedy. The trebles on these are a little bit big and clunky though. So often what I'll do is I'll pull those trebles off and actually replace them with trebles a bit like those. Those ST owner hooks before that we saw on the double clutches. So that's a really good option. Um, other ones that I've used quite a lot in the past with some success is the Bullet 5 Omino. So these are a little bit of a cheaper alternative. So um, I've used those a lot in just open lakes, slowly working those back. They come in a range of different colors and that. You can see that bib looks a little bit different. It's got that kind of squarish kind of fit off but that does get a really good action in the water. The reason they call them bullet lures is they do cast really, really well. So that's another really good option. And another one, if you're looking for some really affordable options, you've got things like the Savage Gear 3D Prey Minnow. So this is the newer revision. These are the ones that came out in 2022. These are the older ones, which I also really like. So I actually caught a monster trout using one of these uh, about two years ago. So they do work really, really well. They're a cheaper alternative. And finally, one of the other ones that I like to use, this is a Dua Realis Ryuki Spearhead, which is a little bit of a mouthful. So that's a 70 mil version, similar characteristics to a double clutch, a little bit more expensive. These are really, really good for a whole range of species. I use them on redfin quite a bit as well. So that's another one you might look at. Okay, so that's shallow diving hard body lures. That now takes us to spoons. And this is a type of lure that's become really, really popular over the last couple of years. I use these a lot because they weigh a bit more. So the ones I'm gonna show you now range anywhere from about seven grams all the way through to 14. So you can imagine the casting distance that you can get on some of these spoons is crazy. And obviously when you're fishing some of these big lakes to cover more distance can be really, really helpful. If I did have a favorite of that lot, it's probably one of the cheaper ones. So that is the Strike Pro Bobbin Spoon. So we've done really, really well on these with those stonker trout that we've been targeting over the last month or two. I'll put a picture up right here that you can see. Um, the reason why I like these ones is they're very, very slow sinking. So these weigh seven grams. If you're gonna use your one or three or two to four kilo rod and you're using quite light line, so you might have it spooled with six pound, eight pound line, that sort of stuff, you can actually cast these things a really, really long way but because they're slow sinking means that you can work them really, really slowly. What you're gonna find is with some of these more pressed metal type of spoons, what happens is because of their weight and they don't really have a lot of swimming action, they just sink to the bottom very quickly. So you have to fish them in a particular way. However, with these spoons, because they sink very slowly, you can really mix up your retrievals. Now, so obviously they come in lots and lots of different colors there. So you can see there's a couple that I've got open that I use and definitely bright colors and obviously on the other sides is silver so you've basically got one side that is nice and painted and i'm always trying to mimic the colors of a rainbow or a brown trout perfect example there so there is a brown trout color right there and there is kind of your rainbow trout looking one there a little bit they've got a really really weird shape and um that's actually what causes that very erratic swimming action it's just, to some respects 
these almost fish are a little bit like an OSP bet minnow in terms of that that retrieval is almost different every time you use them, but it's that erratic nature that is supposed to mimic like a wounded bait fish of some sort. And that's why these things work really, really well. So these, because of that really weird action and because they're made out of plastic, um, they do sink very, very slowly. So a lot of trout systems that I'm fishing in might be really, really big, but they might be quite shallow. And particularly if you're land-based fishing, a lot of the areas you're fishing might only be three meters, four meters deep, no more than that. So what it allows you to do is you can cast this out and then you can work it back in a whole range of different ways. So if you wanted to do just a continuous slow roll, you're gonna find is this is gonna move around and bob around in the water and work really, really well. The other thing that you can do is you can do your twitches and your pauses and all that sort of stuff. And again, because of that slow sinking rate, it allows you to sort of get that action in the water, which also works really well. The other thing that we've found is you control these at the back of your kayak or your boat ideally at a slightly slower pace, so maybe 2.5 knots, and you're gonna get really nice action in the water. So these Strike Pro Bob and Spoon, so they are 55 millimeters in length, and they weigh 7.3 grams. If you are using you know, some of your finesse style rods, so your one to three kilo and your two to four kilo rods, 7.3 grams is quite heavy, and you're gonna be able to cast that an absolute mile. So these spoons cost about $14. So that's what's pretty good about them compared to a lot of the other spoons, and they're pretty good on catching fish because they've got a really erratic swimming action. So as I said, let's go and cover some alternatives for you. Another one that's a really good alternative, which is similar, is the Black Magic Enticer. And again, those colors there are absolutely outstanding. The pinks and the blacks are replicating a rainbow trout really, really well. Again, these have got a little bit of a strange shape. Um, so you're gonna get that really kind of wobbling and darting swimming action in the water. So that's a really good alternative. Very, very similar to the Bob and Spoon. Ones that I've used for many, many years are the Pontoon 21 Paco Spoons. So. What's really awesome about these ones is that they come in different sizes. So this is a 45 millimeter one that weighs 10 grams. And this one here is a 54 millimeter one, which weighs a whopping 14 grams. So you can imagine a 14 gram lure, you can cast that an absolute mile. So if you're working a really big lake, these are a fantastic option. If you're gonna go that heavy, you just need to make sure that you're not gonna break your rod tip. Have a look at the specs on the rod. It will always tell you the lure casting weight, and you don't wanna be using a 14 gram lure if your rod's only got, say, a one to seven gram casting weight, because there's a really good chance that you could break your rod tip. So do keep that in mind. But these are really, really well. We've got some footage catching some really exceptional rainbow and brown trout with these. Really, there's not a lot of action to these lures. All you're doing is you're casting them, you're getting distance, and you really need to roll them back at a slow or medium pace, fast enough that you're not gonna snag up on the bottom. And the other alternative to that is the Nori's Wasabi Spoon. So this one's got probably a little bit more built-in action. So these were actually designed for vertical jigging for bass in the States. And obviously you bring them over here, they're really good on redfin, they're really good on trout, depending on how you fish them. Um, so they've got a couple of different options. So they've got an eight gram and I think they've got a 12 gram. Okay, so that's your spoons there, which is an exceptional option. Let's move on to winged lures. And what I mean by winged lures is we're talking about things like that, that kind of have those wing shape profile sizes. And really ideally these were designed for trawling at the back of your boat or kayak. So the reason why they have these wings is you get that really weird darting and bobbing action in the water. It's that constant erratic moving. If you get the right trolling pace and your rod tip bobbing properly, is really trying to imitate some sort of wounded fish. So if you're a trout and you see something that's struggling in the water, like a wounded bait fish, this is trying to mimic that. And that's why sometimes it's really important to try and get your colors right to kind of match the hatch. There is a couple of ways that you can fish these. I Ideally, you're trolling these at the back of your boat or your kayak. Um, I've found about three to three and a half knots is a really nice speed with sort of 40 to 50 meters of line behind you. That tends to work really, really well. I try not to fish any more than two at the back of the boat because what you tend to find is if you've got any more than that, all you end up is with a mess and a tangle when you actually hook up and it becomes chaotic rather than a little bit more control. The other thing you'll find is that these do weigh quite a bit. So a little bit like the spoons, you can cast them from the banks. And when you do, just do a bit of a continuous slow roll. And again, 
because of those wings, these are just sort of bobbing and moving in the water. So they also do make for a really good land-based uh, fishing option. The ones that I'm gonna show you, so these are 52 millimeters and they're 13.5 grams. So that is definitely the size that I like to use when I'm targeting trout. So these do come in lots of different sizes. You can get them in seven gram, these 13.5 grams, which is my definite preference, 20 grams and 26 grams. So you can get some quite big and heavy ones. And those heavier ones are really designed where you need to get that lure down in deeper water, especially for fishing systems that are really, really deep. If you can put a 26 gram on there, it may prevent you needing to use things like down riggers to get your lure down deep. So these have been around for a long, long time, these Winston Tassie Devils. They come in 50 different colors, if you can believe. These three are definitely my favorites though, okay? So those ones there are really nice. Again, like I've said earlier, it's really matching the colors and patterns of a rainbow trout. Even this one is gonna resemble more of like a bait fish that's in the water. And you can definitely get your darker colors that also represent things like a brown trout. The beauty about these is they only cost $7. You used to get a little bit of wire and then a treble. So that was basically how you fished with these. And then what you would do is you would feed this through the lure and then what you would do is you would tie your line onto there and that's how it was basically rigged and ready to hit the water. These days it's a little bit different. They don't give you that copper wire. All they do is give you a single treble and a red bead to stop that filtering through. What we have found is that the catch rates on these three-sided trebles sometimes aren't as high and also we've found that the release rates on the trout aren't as good with the ones that I'm gonna show you now which are these twin single assist hooks. Okay, so I've been using these quite a bit. So these are fantastic. So if you're gonna fish a lot with Tassie Devils, I really recommend that you go and have a look at these. And again, all you do is you get a little red bead that you attach to there, you tie your line to it, and away you go. And the hookup rates are really, really good with these. As you're moving in the water, they kind of open up like that. There isn't a huge volume of alternatives. You got things like spinner blades and stuff like that. The only other thing that I've been using a little bit is a Tassie Devil blade, which looks like this, and again, you could argue that this looks exactly like those Tassie Devils. It's very, very similar. I guess the only difference here is just the weight and the setup. Obviously, you've got that nice painted side, which is replicating a rainbow trout, and then you've got that nice, shiny, coppery side on the other side. So that's another viable option, another really cost-effective one. Okay, so that is your winged lures there. And now we're gonna move on to soft plastics. And this might surprise some people, but soft plastics are really, really effective on trout. There's quite a bit of stuff here that I'm gonna cover with you, okay? So your generic tried and trusted normal type of soft plastics that you're probably used to using for brim and pinkies and all that sort of stuff work really, really well. You're talking things like your Z-Man two and a half inch grub. So you can see a couple of different options there work really well. Things like your small paddle tails, Z-Man Slim Swims two and a half inch. Things like your bait junky two and a half inch paddle tires. So they've been really, really well. That's been one of the best things that I've had lately, that particular color there, and also the ones in black and gold. So they work really, really well. The other ones that work really, really well is your Munro's 2.75 inch soft plastic. So they're a little bit bigger. That one there in the glass monkey color has got an exceptional, I guess, natural bait presentation color that really mimics things like your bait fish and stuff in the water. So that one works really, really well. And obviously things like motor oil and that as well. You've also got brands like Strike Tiger who specialize a range of soft plastics, particularly around trout fishing. So let's cover why you would use soft plastics. A, low cost option. You can go and buy a packet of soft plastics and it costs you anywhere from about eight bucks through to about 11 bucks. And you usually get about eight or nine soft plastics per packet. So really, really cheap. You can chop and change the weight. So anything probably from one thirty-two of an ounce all the way through to about a quarter of an ounce. And depending on that system that you're fishing, they are very, very versatile. You can fish these in a whole range of different ways and always an awesome option for beginners. You don't need to do a lot of fancy kind of imparting action. You can just cast these and slow roll them. You can hop them off the bottom. There's a new pauses. You can do all sorts of stuff and mix up the retrieve. And that's what makes these such a good option that they are really, really versatile. Let's talk about sizes and let's talk about colors. So for me, usually your two inch and your two and a half inch are gonna be standouts. You're gonna find there's gonna be things like your creature baits, which I'm gonna to touch on a little bit. So they come in smaller sizes and you rig them up with a lighter jig head. The standout colors are 
black and gold. So there's gonna be a lot of soft plastics, a bit like these things, which I use quite a bit, which are black and gold color. Any natural type of looking color, again, things like that, that look like a bait fish really well. Your motor oil, as I said, this one here I've used quite a bit lately. That is a really, really good color. So that's just your UV chartreuse. Um, Bloodworm. Um, pinks is another color that fishes really, really well. So Z-Man have got a color called Bubblegum. That is an outstanding one. And again, if we follow that kind of summary that you want to match the color of a rainbow trout or a brown trout, those bubblegum ones are really, really exceptional. So there's a whole way that you can rig all of these up. So obviously quite small jig heads, your weights varying from probably one third to all the way to a quarter of an ounce. Now, the way that I really like to rig these up is to use a Revlock spinner, okay? So that there is a one eighth of an ounce jig head. And as you can see, that has just got the spinner that is attached to them. A little bit like the old Colorado jigs and things like that, or a jig spinner. And obviously what happens is, as you're moving this in the water, you've got the swimming action of the tail, but you've also got this which is moving around a bit like a spinner, that you can kind of cover both angles at once. Having really the versatility of a soft plastic, but also having your jig head with a spinner attached is a really, really great way of rigging up. If you didn't want to do that, then obviously you can just rig them up normally like that as if it was a normal jig head and they work really, really well. Um, you can definitely use sense, things like your S-Factor and your Procure, rubbing a little bit into the tail. So I don't tend to start smearing scent on straight away. I tend to wait and if the bite's a little bit quiet, then, then I start using them. If you're fishing in shallow streams, then things like these can be really, really exceptional. So these are little one inch nymphs. Now if I open up one of these and show you, the reason why creature baits work quite well, so by creature baits we're meaning anything that imitates a cricket or a fly or a nymph in this case. And as you can see, these are really, really cool. Again, in those black and gold colors, the natural presentation, this looks like something that would be swimming on top of the water column. Now what happens a lot of times when you're trout fishing early morning and evenings, you get all of your insects and your bugs and your critters and stuff that are moving around on the top. And often what trout will do is they'll come up and they'll basically eat all of these nymphs and crickets and flies and everything. That's why fly fishing has been so successful for so many years. So these can do something very, very similar. These work really well in shallow streams um, and you can also use them in lakes. The trick with these is, is you need to rig them very, very light. So I generally fish these with something like a 132 of an ounce jig head. You're gonna find they sink quite slowly and natural presentation like that. Yeah, they've even got things like these little one inch nymphs. So very, very small soft plastics, very effective. Get creative, there's a whole range of stuff. It's low cost, it's quite easy to use. Okay, so that is soft plastics. It now takes us on to our fifth category, which is surface lures. Again, this might be another one that surprises people that they haven't really tried, but surface lures also work really well on trout. It's a little bit like that theory that I just said with soft plastics, particularly those creature baits. Trout are notorious for feeding at first light and on evenings. And obviously what they're doing a lot of times is they're going to the surface and they're eating you know, your flies and your bugs and your insects and all that sort of stuff off the top. So this is why surface lures can work really, really well. So things like your cicadas and your poppers, I haven't done too well with those. Those I tend to really use on things like your bass and your perch. I find that those are really, really effective. What I have done okay with is more like your minnow kind of style surface lures, things like your OSP bent minnows, things like your Daiwa slippery dogs, okay? So they're the, probably the two that I go to there that work really, really well. You've got some pencil minnows as well, which um, probably doesn't have the darting action like the other ones, but those three options there work really, really well. I tend to fish these, as I said, on early mornings and evenings, particularly when I can see trout surfacing. So often when you go fishing on those early mornings and evenings, if you just sit back and watch the water, you'll see breaking water quite frequently. And what that is, that is trout that have come up to the top and they're eating. So that is a really good time to be using these. I also find that I get a lot of really good use out of these surface lures. It's often your really shallow and weedy areas. So Particularly on my kayak, I can fish a lot of waters where it's just chock full of weed. But what you're going to find is you get a lot of trout that will either sit in the weed or just above it waiting for an easy feed of something to go past. And obviously when you're fishing with your hard body lures and your soft plastics, what happens is they just get stuck in the weed and then there's no swimming action. Your lure or your plastic cup and weed, you catch nothing. 
That's where these work really, really well. So if you're fishing in really shallow, weedy areas, you can just skip these over the top of the surface, pause them on top of where the fish are, and often they'll come out of those weedy areas and absolutely hammer these. So that's where I use these. So they're definitely not the first thing that I tend to rig up. I said, unless I'm fishing your first light, and unless I'm fishing in those really shallow and weedy areas, okay? So things like your OSP bent minnows, 76 millimeters, they've got a really erratic swimming action. The swimming action is pretty much not the same on any single retrieve. There's just different, they've got that weird kind of banana shape and these kind of confuse a lot of people in how to work them and to be honest, there are some ways that you should work them, but I don't think there is a perfect way. I think it's just a case of experimenting. What I tend to do is I cast these, let them sit on the water surface for five or 10 seconds. You'll see all those ripples in the water disperse, and then just basically do a few little retrieves and then let it sit there and a few little trees and kind of keep mixing that action. Sometimes I'll twitch the rod tip a little bit to try and get a tiny little bit of sur subsurface action to get it sink just a little bit and then sit it on top. Um, you know, these are notorious for working really, really well on brim and tailor and even flathead in your shallow flats. The other ones, as I said, that I do use quite a bit is the Daiwa in feet slippery dogs. These ones are a little bit different to those. These ones, you have to impart all the action yourself. So if you just cast these and slow roll them, you'll see that they do nothing on the water. But if you do a lot of sort of downward twitching and jerking action, you start to get that walk the dog kind of style on the water, which works really, really well. Okay, so that is your surface lures, which now takes us on to some of your smaller, much more lightly weighted lures. And these are things for like your shallow streams. Also really good when you're targeting your really small stock trout, like your yearlings and things like that. So immediately you'll think of things like the old Rapala floating and countdown series. So these have been around for many, many years. They haven't changed much in design. So that is one really good option. You've got things like your Nori's lay down minnow. So that one I've used a lot over the years. That's accounted for quite a lot of trout. And the ones that I've really started using in recent years that I like a lot is the Daiwa Prezo minnows. Um, and obviously divers got a whole range in their Prezo range. So really short out length rods. So your five foot six and your six foot rods, which are really meant for walking your shallow streams and really skinny water where you know you can cast into some really, really tight cover. I'm walking up against the current and what you're doing is you're looking for your structure. You're looking for your deeper pools and what you need to be able to do with these, these are very, very lightly weighted. So most of them only weigh about three grams. They're usually about 50 millimeters in size. And what you're trying to do is to walk up the river against the stream and find those deeper pools or find where you've got logs, submerged tree branches. That's often where the trout are sitting in. And what they're doing, they're sitting and facing a way that things are going to go over them, that they can get an easy feed. So often what you're doing is you're casting just past them and then working your lure back over the top of them. That's when these trout will smash them. It's very similar to what obviously you see with fly fishing and stuff, but this is more your shallow streams, moving water, still water, but definitely your skinny waters. So as I said, very similar characteristics. Again, you're gonna find a lot of the colors, again, are replicating something like a brown trout, okay? So things like your spotted dog there, very, very popular color. You can see they're all got very, very similar sizes. They're sort of all between that, maybe 30 to 50 mil size. You know, they only weigh between sort of two and a half and three, three and a half grams, so very lightly weighted. So I went fishing. Uh, a few weeks ago in a very, very skinny water and shallow stream, and I lost about four of these. And uh, you often do your best to retrieve them, but most of these are gonna cost about 20 bucks. So it can be an expensive day out on the water. So these Daiwa Prezo minnows, I think I cost $21. You've got the old CD5 and CD3 minnows. So they cost $18. They've been around for a long time, tried and trusted. And you've got the Nori's lay down minnow. So they're about $31 or $32. So it can get quite expensive, but there is very, very much a place specifically for those lures in particular systems that make them fish really, really well. The other areas where I use these a lot is if you're gonna to go to your small family fishing lakes where they've put a lot of like trout yearlings, so fish sort of, you know, sort of 25 to 35 centimeter size, um, these work really, really well. You're not gonna be able to cast them a long distance. You might only get 10, 15 meters of casting distance. You work these back at a slow, constant pace or you add in a few little twitches and pauses, and you'll find you'll catch heaps of those trout yearlings and stuff like that on that, which can be lots and lots of fun. Okay, so that covers our, I guess your smaller, lightly weighted, shallow diving hard body lures for your skinny, shallow streams, and some of your things like your smaller trout yearlings in your family fishing lakes. 
that's gonna bring us pretty much to an end of this, other than to say, obviously there's a whole range of other stuff you can get out there. You know, it'd probably be criminal not to mention things like the old Kelter spinners and your Blue Fox Vibrac spinners. So they've been around for a very, very long time. Very low cost option, very easy to use. Just cast them and do a slow roll and these catch lots of fish. So you've got things like that, your old school spinners. You've got definitely, you know, some new and reformed versions of those that work really, really well. So they work really well. You've got things like blades. You've got things like vibes. You've got your old wobblers. You've got some really old stuff that still works. Um, you know, the other day we were out and just as a bit of a test, we were using a lure that I'd had for about 25 years and we caught one of those big trout using them. Even the old school stuff works really, really well. And obviously you're gonna see new things come out, new innovation all the time, which is what makes this stuff really, really exciting. You even get sort of hybrid stuff of a, you know, a vibe and a spinner and a blade and all that sort of stuff in mind. But guys, that covers my favorite soft plastics and lures for trout fishing. And as I said, we've tried to cover all the specifics in terms of colors, weights, sizes, and how to use them, and covering a, a broad range from soft plastics, shallow diving lures, wing lures, spoons, stream lures, all sorts of stuff. So hopefully in there, there was lots of helpful info insight to get you on your way to going and picking some soft plastics or some lures for targeting trout and having some success in catching plenty. Now, as I said at the start, I really do wanna hear from you. I'd love to know what your favorites are. Let us know in the comments, what's your favorite lure? What's your favorite soft plastic? Maybe what's your favorite of each category? I'm fascinated to hear what you've got to say. Love to read the comments. And guys, as always, I thank you for your time and I look forward to seeing you on the screen next time. Cheers, everyone.